Okay, this is the last, this is the, um, PowerPoint that you need for your quiz on Friday for your enzyme quiz. So pay attention and go for it. Okay, so enzymes, when we measure enzymes, um, first and foremost, you, you have to understand how we can possibly do this. So sometimes we can't actually measure, detect the actual enzyme itself. So most of the time we are looking at how much product is made or whether or not we, the substrate has been used up or the coenzyme has been used up. Um, or even if the coenzyme was altered in some way, shape or form. So we're not actually detecting the enzyme. We're not finding the enzyme like molecularly. This is what this protein is. Um, we're actually finding the use of the enzyme. And that's what, that's where we get our values from. So one of the really important um, enzymes that you need to know, and you're gonna, we're gonna talk about this again later, um, is creatine kinase, or CK, and CK uh, is an enzyme that moves the phosphate back and forth um, in muscle. So it takes the, the phosphate from ATP and puts it on creatine phosphate and then it takes the, from the creatine phosphate and puts it back on the ADP to form ATP. So remember we, we store that extra phosphate um, in the muscles on creatine phosphate so that we can make those high energy bonds in ATP. So we have um, CK in multiple places. Um, we have three different fractions of CK. CKBB is found in the brain. Um, CKMB is found in cardiac muscle, and that's the one that's hugely important to us. Um, and we'll talk about that again when we get to the cardiology piece. Um, and then we have CKMM which is found in skeletal muscle muscle. Now there are other muscles in your body. So of course you're going to find CK in other places. These are the primary um, areas where we find the big amounts of it. Okay. Now when you're looking at CK on a person, you're looking at CK, the whole thing, not the fractions CKBB, CKMB, CKMM. So when you get a CK value, that's all of the stuff that's out floating around in the plasma that is CK that's been released. Now, where is CK usually found? It's usually found inside of cells, correct? So does this give a reflection of how much CK we have in the body? No, this gives a reflection of how much CK was released from the cells because the cells were damaged. They were broken open. They had an issue. Okay. So that's where the usefulness of CK comes in to look for damage. Okay. So we'll see CK increase most of the time when it's a muscle issue or a heart issue. Okay. So, um, when CK gets above a certain value, we start saying, oh, maybe we need to, if the patient's presenting with chest pains and shortness of breath and things like that, um, then we're going to look for the CKMB fraction to find out if it's heart or if it's muscle that's making this go up. Okay. So a lot of times you're going to see astronomical values of CK that are from muscular dystrophy, okay, or crush injuries or some sort of trauma to the body. Um, 
so you have somebody come in in an MVA, a motor vehicular accident, and they're not sure if the guy had a heart attack or not when it, you know, to cause the accident. But if he had a lot of damage to the muscles and things like that, the CK could be increased. But we've got to nail down whether or not he did have a heart attack. We do the CKMB. We do something else now. We do troponins, but we do the CKMB to find out if the CK is elevated because of the heart or and he actually had an MI or the CK is just ele elevated because of the muscle damage. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll see CKs elevated when you have a shock or somebody's had a seizure, something of that nature too. Um, we do not fractionate for CKMM and we don't or CKBB typically, just so you know, there's, we don't have fast, easy tests for that. So what they end up doing is they do EEGs, they do, um, different kind of imaging, uh, tests to determine what has actually happened. A lot of times, if it's a stroke, then typically you have, um, deficits in function. So you'll see those as well. Okay. Um, elevated levels can occur in hypothyroidism. So the, we're talking about people who are severely hypothyroid. It's not like a mild hypothyroid that we have under control with Synthroid and stuff like that. Um, you see elevated levels when you have um, cancerous tumors growing um, and Rye syndrome. So Rye syndrome is something that happens to the liver. Um, and the liver is kind of like in a state of failure and, and I want to say disarray, but it's, um, it's having a really hard time because and this is the most common way that people get Rye syndrome. Someone took aspirin because they had a viral infection. Not a good thing. Not a good mix. Don't take aspirin or aspirin containing medicines. Um, you have to use Tylenol, ibuprofen, not aspirin. All right. CK isoenzymes. So we, the CKMM is the muscle. Mostly it's skeletal and, uh, mostly skeletal muscle, but there is a, a small amount of that in your cardiac muscle. Um, <clears throat> if you have muscle injury, so like that intramuscular injection, um, so you just got a vaccination in the muscles like a, a tetanus shot, or, um, if for some reason <clears throat> you've cut yourself kind of deep, and it goes through muscle, you'll see an elevation in your CKMM fraction as well. Like I said, we don't isoenzyme very often. We don't do the fractionation. What we typically do is we look specifically for CKMB um, because we have a test that we can run on the clinical analyzer that, that easily. Um, CKMB is found in cardiac muscle only. Um, it is actually like cardiac muscle and the large vessels surrounding it. So like the big guys, um, the aorta and the pulmonary artery, they have muscle in them. So they, they also would have, um, CK and BM. Okay. If your CK is elevated and it has to be above a certain point, then we're going to be fractionating. We're going to be looking for a CK and B. Um, if CKMB is greater than, and some places say 5%, some places say 6%, um, of the total CK value, that is an indicator that there was myocardial damage. So heart tissue has been damaged in some way, shape or form. Does it mean that there was an acute MI? No, but it does mean that there was myocardial, um, damage. Okay. If, uh, that we have an acute myocardial infarction, your CK levels will rise. They'll start 
going up within four hours um and actually they start rising pretty quickly within like an hour or two but we're starting going to start seeing good elevations um like four to eight hours they peak typically around 24 hours after the incident and then they go back to normal in about three days so um it's it goes up and down pretty quickly but <clears throat> um we now have a newer cardiac marker that is even better than that that's the troponin and you'll learn about those when we get to the cardiology section um ckbb can also be um that's a, a brain thing primarily we don't see this um normally excuse me sorry that's like nine thousand people call me all right next so this is enzyme activity for myocardial infarction what we used to do years and years and years ago we used to do asts okay we found out that that wasn't enough we also would do myoglobins well we found out that wasn't enough it wasn't fast enough to find um out what was going on with our patients so ooh, so we find out that ck comes on pretty darn fast um and if you look at this at the bottom where it says one that's a day after the myocardial infarction okay so the peak of ckmb is about 24 hours okay notice how fast that ck value goes up all right so you know four to eight hours is when it starts really rising uh, above what a normal would be it's you know um so the normal value is at one that's what normal value is so times upper limit of normal um so this is one times that's normal if it gets to two times the upper limit of normal then you know we're seeing a, a pretty drastic rate so it goes higher and higher and higher and higher and ckmbs can or ck can get up to you know seven eight times ckmb fraction goes way up there okay um so ast values can get up to three times the upper limit limit of normal ld the lactate dehydrogenase which we're going to talk about in a couple more minutes that can get up to about two and a half to three times the upper limits of normal following a myocardial infarction okay so we used to evaluate these guys we don't anymore we keep finding better markers every single time to be able to nail it down a lot better Oop, sorry gotta go back all right so ck's <clears throat> um men typically have a higher ck value than women because men tend to have more muscle than females females tend to have more fat men tend to have more muscle um so anytime that you lice red cells like red cells can also have ck in them okay so hemolysis let me just tell you hemolysis affects enzyme values so if you have hemolysis that hemolysis that you can visibly see there's a good chance that any uh, that a whole lot of your different um enzymes are going to be elevated because some of them are only elevated if you have moderate to severe hemolysis but like you know if you can see it that's enough to be able to like you see the hemoglobin um that might be enough to affect your enzyme values okay um going on next one lactate dehydrogenase the ld that we were just saw on that um little line graph um lactate dehydrogenase is found in your heart your liver your muscles your skeletal muscle your kidneys your breath your erythrocytes okay it's found in a couple other places too but you know these are the big ones um so how does it help us do anything well ld values will increase with hemolysis pernicious anemia hepatitis cirrhosis um so if something's going on with the red cells something's going on with the with the liver something's going on with the heart the kidney the skeletal muscles 
where we have problems. We these things are happening. Okay. Um, notice that it says pulmonary infarction, but it does not have lungs up here. Um, pulmonary infarcts affect the heart. Just remember that. Um, but also there is a little bit of lung stuff in here. It falls into one of the lower fractions. That's why it's not like named up here, but it's, it's a big thing. Okay. So what we do is, um, you have to watch out for any, any amount of hemolysis because that's going to falsely elevate this because it's in the red cells. Um, the lactate dehydrogenase is what helps convert from pyruvic acid to lactic acid and back again. Okay. So it's useful and it's used a lot. Okay. Um, Really super high concentrations of LD are found in the liver and in the heart. Okay. So when we see LD going up, the first things that we're looking for are what's going on with the liver, what's going on with the heart and lungs. Okay. Those are the first things that we're looking at. And then after that, or perhaps with that, um, if it goes higher than what we would normally see with your hepatitis your cirrhosis, your, your heart attacks, um, then we're going to be like, okay, something must be going on with the blood then. So you're going to see really high levels with your leukemia. ALL is a big one acute lymphocytic leukemia um and then your hemolytic anemias or your pernicious anemias they're they're going to see higher levels of ld than other like liver and heart stuff so there's um the ld methods for some reason I don't know why, but you still need to know who Wacker and Robluski Ledoux are. But if you just know that those names work with lactate dehydrogenase, you'll be in a good shape. Okay. Um, so one is formation of NADH and then the other is consumption of NADH. So Wacker is not the one who destroys it. Wacker is the one who builds it. Okay. And then Ledoux, Robluski Ledoux is the one who destroys the NADH. So it's, it's super crazy, but, um, it's, it's been a, a board of certification question for forever about the Wacker Robluski Ledoux methods. I don't know why. Um, stupid. But anyhow, um, remember hemolysis can, can really increase this because red cells have a hundred to a 500 times the upper limits of normal in them than what we normally see in the plasma. So if there's any degree of hemolysis, it's going to send this through the roof. Okay. The isoenzymes. Here we go. You got LD1, LD2, LD3, LD4, and LD5. Okay. LD4 and LD5 are liver and skeletal muscles. Okay. LD1 and LD2 are heart and red cells. Now, LD1 is typically lower than LD2. And in the case of an acute myocardial infarction, we'll, we will see those values change. LD1 will become higher than LD2. Okay. This is something called the LD flip. It's mentioned in your book. You need to understand that. And I do not know why we need to understand this because we, we do not fractionate these out anymore to see the LD flip. Um, but you know, they still want you to know it. Okay. LD3. LD3 is the one where we get the pulmonary infarctions. We're looking at um, ALL levels. Um, we have pancreatitis, splenic injury, stuff like that. So LD3 is the weird stuff, like the leukemia, the pulmonary infarctions. 
LD4 and LD5 are typically liver issues. Now there is an LD6 now that they have discovered that is alcoholic dehydrogenase. Um, and that is only, that is associated with arteriosclerotic cardiovascular failure. So it's very small fraction. You won't normally see this unless somebody has the arterial diseases. Okay. So, um, not something that is normally found all the time in your patients. Okay, so here's the LD1 is greater than LD2 is probably an acute myocardial infarction. If LD1 and LD2 are elevated, then it's very good chance that, and this is markedly elevated, um, that there's a good chance that you have intravascular hemolysis, so hemolytic anemia of some sort. And LD3 is typically pulmonary embolism or pancreatitis is what we're seeing. So um, with your normal fractionations, this is what we we're normally seeing. This is on the blood. So one and two, look, one got bigger than two. Woo. LD flip, right? Um, this one is L4 and L5 have just jumped up and five typically becomes very large compared to what they normally are. Um, then that's when you're seeing hepatitis. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Here's five. Here's your one got bigger than two for a myocardial infarction. Am I going to ask you about these? Am I going to pick these pictures and have you do them? No, not this time around because you have enough to deal with, with the protein ones. Okay. So, AST, um, aspartate aminotransferase, used to be called serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase, um, which was the SGOT, okay? Um, they still sometimes write, some of the doctors still write SGOT and SGPT, SGPT is for ALT, um, but, you know, we're getting there. Um, AST is uh, widespread throughout the body. It's found in many different places. It's found in red cells. It's found in skeletal muscle. It's found in liver cells. It's found like a, a whole mess of different places. So hang on. Okay. That was how they're interrupting me. Um, <laughs> So this is, this is, um, <clears throat> this is a generic thing. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, um, we have to look at AST with other enzymes to be able to figure out why it's going up or down. So you want to know that, um, AST can be increased due to hemolysis because it is found in red cells. Um, it is found in muscles. It is found in lung. It is found in liver. Okay. So we see higher amounts with muscle and liver than with pulmonary embolism. But if you don't look at AST with the next one, ALT, you're not going to see the big picture of what's happening in your patient. Okay. So that being said, we move on to ALT, alanine aminotransferase, um, which used to be called serum glutamic pyruvate transaminase. Um, so that's where the SGPT comes from. Um, ALT is diagnostic for hepatic disorders. Okay. What? Say that again? Um, we just learned that AST is found with, in the liver, it's found in muscle, it's found in red cells, it, it can help to diagnose pulmonary embolisms, right? We, okay. ALT is primarily found in liver, but there's a little bit in your heart, your mu skeletal muscle, your red cells, 
okay? ALT is the most specific liver enzyme, so you have to look at ALT and AST together to figure out whether or not the numbers are increasing due to liver involvement or muscular involvement, okay? Um, your book says that this is relatively unaffected by hemolysis. Um, if your hemo, if your the hemoglobin that is being released is moderate to severe, okay, it starting your plasma or serum is starting to look red, okay. There's a good chance that your ALT is going to be increased as well, so. Your best bet, since AST and ALT have to be looked at together and AST is going to be high in any hemolysis, don't use hemolyzed specimens. Okay, that's that's my best advice. If it's homo if you need to do enzymes, don't use hem hemolyzed specimens. Okay, um, notice, oh crap, I forgot to go back. All right, AST, look, up to like 35. Okay, these things are low, low numbers. Okay, LD's up to like 220, like the other ones are, are higher. The AST and ALT are low numbers, like 35 to 45. Okay, when you start getting up to like 60s and higher, there's something going on with the liver that needs to be looked at. Okay, my husband was on long term um, high dose. Tylenol and ibuprofen for a very long time at the recommendation of the doctors. And I looked at his, his lab work and I said, you're killing your liver with all of this crap. You need to go into actual pain management so that we can decrease some of the values here. He's like, what are you talking about? And I showed him the AST and the ALT values. And I said, you see what the normals are supposed to be? Like half of what you already have. I said, you haven't been doing this crap for as many years as you've been doing. It's affecting your liver, which means that keep doing it and you're not going to have a liver. So you need to go into pain management. This was when he had pain issues. But we're, um, it is very easy to see problems okay so you have to look at alt and ast together or you won't get the big picture all right alkphos alkaline phosphatase um can be associated with kidney liver spleen um bones intestines placentas okay one of the big things is we use alkaline phosphatase a lot um, as a marker for, is there something going on with bones? Okay. Um, it helps us to determine whether or not there is something going on with the liver or the gallbladder. Okay. Um, and then you're going to have an elevation normally um, from your 16 around 16 20 weeks of, of pregnancy because that just happens that's when the liver when the baby's liver starts kicking in um, and starts working so we end up seeing a higher amount in mom okay um, but your alkphos level if your alkphos level is markedly elevated, so this is three times the upper normal limits or upper limits of normal L U L N, um, and you have a moderately or markedly increased GGT, okay, which comes next, gamma glutamyl transferase. Um, typically, you're going to see obstructive jaundice. So, what does that mean? It means that your bile duct is in is blocked you've got like gallstones and the bile can't get out so your bilirubin is increasing throughout the bloodstream and you're turning yellow okay um if you see alkphos way high without the ggt increase you start looking at bone 
there's something going on with the bone do they have sarcoma do they have um osteoporosis coming on early in their development do they have Paget's disease do they have like stuff like that and we're going to talk about bone stuff later when we do i think it's cardiovascular so it's coming um but way way need to know all right um if the serum or plasma sits on cells so if it's not drawn in a serum separator and it's just drawn in a regular um tube and you don't separate the plasma or the serum from the cells you can get an increased value okay. ggt here we go ggt gamma glutamyl transferase um we see this in a lot of different areas of the body we it's the it primarily the softer organs so pancreas spleen liver kidneys brain the prostate okay um so when we see ggt increase a lot of times we we primarily think it's got to be liver something liver something is going on okay um if the ast and the alt are not super elevated then we're like whoop nope can't it's not liver something maybe it's the pancreas that's the second place that we go typically um with people that are alcoholics and i mean alcoholics severe alcoholics not like they are weekend alcoholics i'm talking the ones that are like hooked can't live without their alcohol um daily that those people we see um ggt is a good value to look at for whether or not they're actually um doing what they're supposed to be doing um because they'll go into a rehab for treatment and then um we take a baseline ggt and we keep on them and look at them and watch them and then we release them from the rehab center and we have them come back every so often for blood work and we find out that yeah no your ggt values are up increasing so you must be using again you see how this goes um <laughs> so ggt level your alkfos your ast your alt those are all liver enzyme okay so all of them being high points directly at liver 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 okay if we don't see high alts but we see some of the others like the ggt and the alp well that could be a pancreas okay um if ggt is normal and your alkfos is high typically it's bones so these are these are things that you have to these are ones that you're going to learn you're going to see it once you get out there in the field once you start seeing patient profiles you start seeing the values um you're going to see how these things work out <clears throat> all right amylase um amylase is made by your salivary glands and it's made by your pancreas um you have two parts of your pancreas you have the islet cells and you have the senar cells so you have the pancreatic acini you have the pancreatic islets um all of the enzymes come from the acini the islet cells are the ones that do the other stuff that glucagon and insulin thing you guys remember that i hope um so uh the when we see increases in amylase we think something must be going wrong with the pancreas but it might not be pancreas okay because it could be salivary glands though so here's something really interesting little kids when they um teeth salivary glands are excessively overactive um, and there, if we took amylase values on them, they'd be like skyrocketing. Okay. Very interesting. Um, but we, you know, don't typically do amylase values on two-year-olds. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> there are cases where your amylase value will not be increased um, and the person has pancreatitis anyway and that would be most commonly um, it's because they've got cholesterolemia they've got a, a lot of triglycerides and they've got a lot of lipids in their blood to begin with um, that's you know uh, if it's a lipemic value or a lipemic specimen you may have to clear it by ultracentrifuging it before you can um, do your amylase there mm, that may or may not help with the situation okay morphine and opiates can increase your amylase values so what we have in addition to amylase is something called lipase okay so um you may see ectomic pregnancies and appendicitis with amylase values that are pretty darn high okay cholecystitis is is um gallstones okay but this this is one big thing is like we see amylase values because people come in to the er and they're presenting with lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain on the right we start doing some probes to find out if there's pain on the rebound if there's pain on the rebound we were like oh they probably have appendicitis um and we do the blood work to verify okay at ruptured ectopic pregnancy for women it like could be right or left right so then they start looking at ultrasounds and stuff like that so there's there's a whole lot of stuff that goes with this okay um i am not going through all the methods sorry i forgot to take that slide out um the lipase okay lipase is primarily found in pancreas um there's a little some there's some produced by your salivary glands you'll find it in your intestines um and a little bit in the stomach because of the fact that you have to swallow the the saliva to get to the stomach and then you have more that it's made in the pancreas and dumped into the intestines to help break down lipids so when we see acute pancreatitis this number goes up like crazy okay now when i say crazy i'm talking um your reference value is is like 30 something 40 okay when you see lipases that hit hundreds there's something going on with the pancreas okay and that's what we see with pancreatitis and and ectopic pregnancies and, and appendicitis and stuff like that appendicitis will see the amylase go up but the lipase doesn't okay um it's really interesting because the lipase is primarily used up by the time that it gets down to that juncture um so we we don't see lipase that far down amylase yes um but interesting that you know <clears throat> um we see this increase yes you will see increases for other things but when you start seeing way high values of lipase pancreatic pancreatitis probably nine times out of ten go do an ultrasound find out whatever right imaging study mri whatever you want to do okay g6pd i know that you guys have heard about glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase before because you've had hematology if you've had hematology you know that g6pd deficiency is typically a sex linked um problem and that it can cause some major issues with anemias okay so you don't we don't do G6PDs on everybody. This is not part of our normal panels that we do for for people to assess their regular normal health. This is a specialized test. When they look for G6PD, they already have they already know this person's anemic. Now we got to figure out why. Okay. Um, colonesterase. 
there are two types of cholinesterase. There's acetylcholinesterase, which is a uh, that uses the acetylcholine that is the nerve neurotransmitter um, that goes from nerve cells to to skeletal muscles. Okay, and then there's pseudocholinesterase, which can be found in um, other regions. So we find, because that one acts on a whole lot of different things other than just muscle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, if you see a cholinesterase being done, they're trying to determine if something has happened to a patient. Okay. Why are you not, um, why are your muscles not working? Is the acetylcholinesterase not being produced? Are, are, are your cells not reacting to it? Um, is something going on in the brain itself? So we're doing pseudo values, right? So a lot of times you're just going to see a CHE value and that's to find out, do we have high levels or low levels of this? And then after that, then you'll be looking for acetylcholinesterase or pseudocholinesterase to find out what, what are we looking at? Is it a muscle issue? Is it a brain and a nerve issue? That's, that's the big guy. Um, so pseudocholinesterase is typically associated with, um, nerve and brain stuff. <clears throat> um, And we don't typically do pseudo pseudocholinesterases when we have liver failure and stuff. We don't normally do them, but we can, okay? Because they'll decrease too. But the acetylcholine acetylcholinesterase is one of the we do when we're when we're trying to figure out like muscle issues. Is it the brains aren't talking to the muscles? The 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 muscles aren't getting the the messages um what's going on with that okay um there are a whole mess of enzymes that we don't talk about okay one of the ones that you and there's like God, so many of them okay um but one of the things that you need to understand is that there are enzymes that are specifically used to help metabolize drugs in your body now everything then most of the things that you take in that are medications we take them in orally most of them right and <clears throat> so when they go through the gi tract and they get absorbed they go to the liver right through the hepatic portal system hepatic portal vein um and in the hepat in the liver we have all a whole mess of our liver cells or hepatocytes have um, cytochrome complexes named P cytochrome P450. Very, very important, right? Um, so CYP450, cytochrome P450, is essential to the actual therapeutic value of drugs themselves. So this is what helps to metabolize and make them work the way that they do. If you don't have that cytochrome P450, um, a lot of the drugs you don't metabolize well. Okay. <clears throat>